Good morning. Well, we are here to join as Floridians to say that uh, we need to stop this invasion at our southern border once and for all. And we're here. We've got a number of folks that are joining us uh, today. We have a General John Haas, who's our Adjutant General of the Florida National Guard. We have Executive Director of the Highway Safety Motor Vehicles uh, Department, which oversees Highway Patrol, uh, Dave Kerner. Uh, we have uh, Director Mark Themey from the Florida State Guard. Uh, and then we have uh, Sergeant Anthony uh, Deboisevich, uh, an FHP trooper who has been deployed to the southern border. And then we have Gary Howe, Colonel Gary Howes, Director of the Florida Highway Patrol. J uh, go back to January 20th, 2021, uh, what does Joe Biden do as soon as he gets into office? He opens the southern border. Uh, he says he's not going to deport people for 100 days. He issues a slew of executive orders to not just not have the border be fortified, but really to invite people uh, to come in. And when he was running for president, he had said that people are going to be able to come in. And he created an environment where you could pay some coyote thousands of dollars and just get to that border and you're home free. And so we've seen a huge increase uh, over many years, and now it's as bad as it's ever been at the southern border. We understood this problem in Florida uh, right at the beginning in 2021. And so as this was happening, uh, Texas was scrambling to defend its people and defend its state, and they needed assistance. They weren't getting any assistance from the federal government. The federal government was acting to thwart what they were trying to do. So uh, we stepped up all the way back in 2021, and we've had people on the ground there uh, since 2021. We've had National Guard, we've had Highway Patrol, Fish and Wildlife, Florida Department of Law Enforcement, you, you name it. Uh, they have been there and they've been making a big, big difference. And they've been able to see a lot of the things that are happening. You know, we have our, our folks from FHP. They're stopping people from Iran coming across the border, Morocco, all these places around the world, which is just crazy that this is happening. Uh, and and uh, Director Kerner can talk about it. He's got a whole laundry list of things. They just had an alien from Mexico uh, that they picked up near the border who was, out, uh, who was wanted for capital murder in the Houston area. Uh, so, so this has been a total disaster. You have massive amounts of drugs pouring into the border, and then the sheer number of people. You know, you don't hear these cities talk about being sanctuary cities anymore, do you? Because they realize you can't possibly take this many people uh, coming in. So we've been uh, assisting from the beginning. Uh, we've also taken steps here in the state of Florida. Uh, we've signed strong legislation to protect Floridians against illegal immigration, including banning sanctuary cities, including having E-Verify for employers, including increasing penalties for human trafficking and human smuggling. Uh, we've also banned local governments and non-government organizations from issuing ID cards to illegal aliens, uh, and we've invalidated out-of-state licenses that have been issued to illegal aliens by states like California. We're not recognizing that here in the state of Florida. Um, and so we've been very, very strong on this. We understand the costs involved, uh, and there are many, many costs. We now have more uh, fentanyl deaths on a, day, on a yearly basis than we've ever had. It's been going up and up. Uh, we've done a lot to stop that here in Florida, and we've had some success in slowing, slowing the problem. But when you have this much coming in, I mean, I, I think they just did, what was it, 15,000 pills uh, that they just seized uh, in Florida? Uh, fentanyl pills. They were disguised as Oxycontin. They were really fentanyl. And just so, and I've been doing this now for years, raising the alarm on it, when you talk to parents who've lost kids from fentanyl, poisoning, a lot of times it's in one of those situations. They think they're taking an oxycotton or something, which, you know, they shouldn't be doing. But if it's laced with fentanyl, you could be poisoned to death right there. So all of those fake oxycotton with that are fentanyl, you know, those are potential death sentences to anyone that takes it. And so we see that. And the, the human toll has been incredible that this is happening. Biden has the authority to close this border today if he wanted to. He lacks the will to get the job done. He lacks the capacity 
to see the problem for what it is and to get the job done. And so the American people are basically left scrambling uh, and they're left to have to deal with this uh, all on their own. Now, we've done a lot. Uh, FHP troopers uh, since 2021, they've intercepted 150,000 illegal aliens. Um, and they have been instrumental in generating over 2,000 human trafficking and human smuggling charges in the state of Texas. Our National Guard have helped staff observation points, patrols, uh, and they have helped with fencing and barriers. Uh, our Florida Department of Law Enforcement has assisted Texas DPS with arrests of uh, criminal aliens, including violent gang members. And Florida Fish and Wildlife has deployed hundreds of officers, over 500 four-wheel drive patrol trucks, and 24 vessels to assist in patrolling the border uh, along the Rio Grande River. So we have stepped up probably more than any other state has stepped up, and we're proud to do that. However, uh, we don't think this is enough. Uh, I believe that a state has a right to fortify its own borders. Uh, and so if Texas is helping to erect barriers putting up razor wire, doing other things to keep illegal aliens out, I want to be helpful with them doing that. I don't want to be part of the federal government trying to tear down these barriers and let more people in illegally. This is crazy that this is the case. Uh, so today, uh, we are going to fortify our presence along the southern border. Uh, we're providing up to one battalion of Florida National Guard, uh, as well as uh, our first ever deployment of the Florida State Guard. And the goal is to in, in, help Texas fortify this border, help them strengthen the barricades, help them add barriers, help them add the wire that they need to so that we can stop this invasion once and for all. And the states have to band together. The states have to band together uh, to be able to defend the rule of law. And, and we see the problems, the drugs, the crime, just the sheer number of people. What has that done to hospitals? What has it done to education? It's just, you just can't do it. I mean, we probably have had 10 million come illegally since Biden's been president. But that number, even if that was legal, we cannot absorb that many people. It's just not the way you, you do business. It's not the way you run a country. Uh, but it's also a larger issue. You know, if we don't have a border, then we are not a sovereign country. Uh, you, either, you either have a border or you don't. You're either a sovereign country or you're not. So what we're doing today is uh, we're stepping up yet again. We're helping. Uh, and I know other states have done a lot. And I, I'm pretty sure some of these other states are going to do more. Uh, but what Joe Biden's administration has done is wrong. What they continue to try to do is wrong. Uh, and his failure to do his duty and satisfy his oath of office um, is something that um, it represents one of the biggest failures of this administration. And that's saying something because there have been a lot. So let's, let's all band together as states. Let's say that our borders matter. Let's say that we're going to support Texas uh, in making sure that we can stop what is happening to our country. So I'm proud to be able to have a lot of people that have served from Florida over these last almost three years now. Uh, we're going to have more that are going to go and they're going to do a great job. And this is important. This is one of the most important issues happening in our country today. You know, the people in D.C., they may not think this is that important because it doesn't affect them. You know, they're more concerned about sending your money overseas or doing whatever they, it is that they do. Uh, but this is really important to the American people. And if you look at the, the potential border deal that they're talking about, where they're going to do some type of reform, first of all, Biden doesn't need legislation to do what he's going to do. Second of all, they're saying, oh, you can have you shut the border down only if you get more than 5,000 illegal aliens a day. Well, that's a million eight a year, 1.8 million a year that you're just saying is fine, that that's an acceptable amount of illegal entries. To me, the only acceptable amount of illegal entries is zero. And that's what our policy should reflect. So uh, what they're doing up in D.C., I mean, look, a lot of that is they're working for their interests. 
Uh, when you start talking about green lighting, that many more illegal entries, I can tell you, like, this has been a hot issue. I've spoken with people all over the country in the last few years about this. I've never had one person say that what we needed to do is what they're thinking about doing in Washington. Not one person has ever said that um, at all because they're not concerned about you. They're not concerned about our country. They're concerned about their own interests. So we're going to bring up some other folks here, but I'm excited to be able to make this announcement. Uh, we're doing our part. Uh, I've said from 2021, when I used to say that this is an American issue, it's not just a border issue, you know, a lot of people in the media would sneer, and now look what's happened. Look where we are now. Uh, as a country. It's sad that this has happened, uh, but we're gonna, not just going to sit idly by. We're going to do something about it. All right, I'm going to bring up some folks. So we'll start with uh, Dave Kerner from Florida uh, Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles. Governor, there's not really much more that I could add about the description and the conditions at our southern border, but I'd like to start by a thanking you as our governor and as our leader uh, not just uh, as the executive director, but as a, as a Floridian, as a, a resident of the state, uh, for proactively uh, taking the mission to the Texas border, protecting Floridians first and putting the state first. You've always done that as our governor, and we're honored to work for you, sir. Thank you for what you've done. I'd also like to say thank you to the men and women behind me who have served on the border. You know, I did some basic math. The Florida Highway Patrol and our state troopers have served over 30,000 individual day and nights away from their families, away from their state, away from their duties here. Having said that, they are never more committed than they are now to be on the border protecting this state. These, these men and women behind me, they see the impact of the open border, not just while they're there, but we have 2,000 state troopers in the state of Florida that patrol these roadways and put bad people in jail every day. They see the 15,000 fentanyl pills. They see the 30 pounds of methamphetamine that were just seized last week. They've never seen this type of uh, drug interdiction in, in their entire careers. And so, Governor, we remain committed to this mission. We're honored to be a part of this mission. And we know that it's a mission of a lifetime. And Director and General, we're certainly excited to have you join us in your capacity to protect the border of the United States and to protect the families and, uh, and constitutionality and sovereignty of the state of Florida. Thank you, Governor. Thanks. You know, if you look at like some of the write up that FHP, you know, does in terms of some of the uh, interactions that they've had, you know, they had one in instance recently where illegal alien took, I think, like a one year old and, and threw the one year old into the Rio Grande to try to get people to come. And then I think they thought they could hop on the boat and get across the border. Someone came tried to rescue, then a, then a lady dropped, I think like a four-year-old or something, and then that, and, and it was, and they ended up, it didn't succeed, you know, the, the kids were rescued, but then they put them back on the other side of the border. But I'm just thinking like, who would throw a one-year-old into a river like that? I mean, like, this is just really, really nuts, and we have no idea who the heck these people are who are coming. Um, do you think they're getting background checks? Uh, do you think they're showing ID? You know, you, if you want to get on a commercial flight in this country, you know, you got to get a, basically a cavity search. You got to show ID. You got to go through all the security. These illegals don't even need photo ID. They can fly on our planes without photo ID. You talk about putting the American people last. What the hell are we doing in this country? It is a total farce. General. Good morning, Governor DeSantis, agency chiefs, distinguished guests, and fellow service members. I'm proud to say that the Florida National Guard is ready once again to answer the call. In partnership with our fellow state agency teammates, in support of, our, of the citizens of Texas and the Texas National Guard. For several years, the Florida National Guard has supported ongoing border security missions in Texas to include deployments in support of multiple federal and state mobilizations. Last spring, the Florida National Guard was the first in the nation to mobilize rotational units to the southwest border in support of Operation Lone Star. During the deployments, the Florida National Guard provided over 700 soldiers to support border security operations. And today, as directed by our governor and commander in chief, we're again mobilizing the Florida National Guard to provide up to a battalion sized multi purpose task force to support the security operations along the Texas border while continuing to provide critical support to our citizens in the state 
by conducting ongoing security efforts and related mission sets here in Florida to include interdiction missions, supporting the Florida Highway Patrol, continued staff support for the Department of Corrections, and sustained aviation support in the Florida Keys. I thank the brave men and women of the Florida National Guard, their families, and the employers who continue to serve and support the great state and nation. The Florida National Guard is always up to the task and will represent the state of Florida well in this very important mission. Our governor has a unique military perspective because he has served our country in uniform. As a naval officer and judge advocate general, he knows firsthand the dedication and discipline required for missions such as this. Governor, thank you for your leadership and for the confidence and enduring support of your soldiers and airmen who proudly serve and answer the call whenever and wherever needed. Sir, your Florida National Guard is always ready, always there. Thanks. All right, Director. Good morning, all, and thank you, Governor DeSantis, for your unflinching leadership uh, and the opportunity to help mitigate the overwhelming threat to public safety that is illegal immigration as the country fights back against the border crisis. At the Florida State Guard, we are prepared to stand shoulder to shoulder with our teammates in the Florida National Guard, the Florida Highway Patrol, the Florida Departments of Law Enforcement and Fish and Wildlife to provide direct support to our brothers and sisters in Texas who are grappling with an unprecedented surge of illegal immigration that threatens their borders and their interior. During Idalia and other severe weather events uh, during this season, our soldiers demonstrated emergency response capabilities as reliable and professional partners responding to all threats to public safety. Since reactivation of the Florida State Guard, our soldiers have been trained and credentialed in emergency response and public safety and humanitarian assistance operations. Our response to the governor's call to action in support of Texas is deeply rooted in our unwavering commitment to support public safety in times of need. The dangers of the border crisis do not stop at state lines and are far too great for any one state to ignore or to overcome. We in the Florida State Guard are postured to deliver rapid response to any and all threats to public safety wherever and whenever the need arises. Thank you for your interest and thank you for supporting our Florida State Guard soldiers. All right, Sergeant. Thank you, Governor, for having us. And uh, I'd just like to bring a little insight to the, to the border crisis that we see on a day in and day out basis. Um, a lot of people don't cover it because it doesn't um, provide good news uh, media attention. But at the end of the day, what we see on a day everyday basis is the number of lives that are brought across over to Florida, to Texas, um, by people of criminal organizations. And the criminal organizations thrive on the people trying to get them across. And, you know, ultimately it affects us locally here in Florida because we're stopping people with drugs. We're stopping people who are um, bringing weapons and things of that nature into our communities um, and having to deal with these individuals on the side of the road that have no regard for anybody's life. They don't care about um, anybody that we're, they're bringing across. The, the big picture for them is making a profit and, and um, that we see on a day in and day out basis. So that's why we're so willing to go across over to Texas and, and try to help prevent those things from coming over to Florida. Um, a lot of people don't see it, but like they said, 30, 30 kilos of methamphetamine just last week uh, that we recovered off of the roadway, um, that 30 kilos can kill numerous, numerous people. And um, a lot of people, that, that doesn't get brought out in, in the media. You know, they don't tell you that they're bringing 30 kilos or or 15,000 fentanyl pills over. So um, we appreciate the support of the governor's office. We appreciate the support of Governor DeSantis and we'll continue to do our mission 
over in Texas uh, to help protect the citizens of the state of Florida. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, we're, uh, we're going to continue doing our part. Uh, this has been an ongoing issue. It's sad that it's, uh, that it's gone on this long. It's sad that, you know, you don't have a, a president willing to just, you know, put his foot down and say, I'm not going to let this happen to my country. Uh, but in the absence of that uh, leadership and the, in the face of the, the dereliction of duty, we're going to step up and do our part. So uh, you're going to have Florida folks. You have them there now. You're going to have more Florida folks there because I think this is an American issue. I don't think it's one state's issue, and I think we have to, we have to do the right thing here. So I'm proud of what all these uh, folks from Florida have done over these last couple years, and I'm proud of what they're going to do uh, as we really come into a really important inflection point about whether we're even gonna be a country anymore or not. And I think if, uh, if we're able to, to help Texas uh, fortify this, then, then I think there's, there'll be a lot of hope for a lot of people. So thank you. Yes, sir. Texas has the right to erect barriers. They were not even a party to that decision. And so uh, I think they're continuing to do what they're going to do, and we are going to assist them in doing that. I mean, just think about it. You say that the federal government has the purview over uh, illegal immigration uh, and borders uh, and that states can't be involved, but the federal government's not enforcing the law. All the states are trying to do is to actually enforce the law um, as, as required. And so, so they're not doing that. Um, so, so the federal government's not doing it. So I think what Texas is doing is just defending itself. I think that's a core attribute of sovereignty to be able to do that. Uh, but, uh, and I know there's been some misreporting on this, the, Texas was not ordered to do anything, to stop or to do anything. It was basically what the federal government, there had been an injunction that was, re, that was relieved, but I think it's ultimately going to be up to Biden. Are you going to have folks go in and forcibly remove barriers so that more people can come in illegally? I don't know that that's a decision that, that, that he would want to do, particularly now that we're in this election year. So I think Texas is in the right. I think they'll ultimately win if they end up becoming a party to any type of litigation. And, and I want to make sure that we, have, we can serve as some force multipliers to get as much of that border uh, fortified as possible. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, first of all, uh, we stood up for the innocence and well-being of the children of the state of Florida. And that's the right thing to do. I'm the, I'm the father of young. I mean, we got a first grader, kindergartner, and a pre-K three. And so my wife and I believe, and I think the vast, vast majority of parents in Florida and throughout the country believe, kids should be able to just be kids. You go to school, uh, you're not having an agenda shoved down your throat, you're not being told that you can switch genders, you're, you're focusing on the basics. And so that was ultimately the initial uh, fight was about that. Uh, you know, Disney was against it, they were wrong. We were right and we did that. Then after that, as, as their corporate welfare privileges came under scrutiny in the legislature, the reality is the Florida legislature has every right uh, to change special districts. They've always had that right. Um, and think what's happened since, since there's been accountability now in that area. Uh, you know, you had the board that we appointed. They've reduced the taxes for all the tenant businesses that were being taxed to basically service Disney's interests. That's not the appropriate use of government. Government is supposed to be something, I mean, it initially was supposed to have, have residential communities there, so voters would have picked who was on it. That obviously did never happen, and, and this one company ended up taking control of the, the local government, which is not good government at all. Uh, and so we, so we knew that the legislature had authority to do it. I had the authority to sign the legislation as we did. And, and I would like to you know, see an accounting from some of the people who last year were trying to say that somehow you know, Disney had, had, had outmaneuvered Florida or that somehow they were in the right on all this. You heard a lot of squawking, 
when they were able to use it to try to attack Florida or try to attack me. I don't hear very much now uh, that the case was summarily dismissed. I mean, they don't have a case. Uh, even if you assume everything they say is true, they do not have a case. So we absolutely anticipated this. We knew ultimately what we did uh, would be upheld. Uh, they, I'm shocked that they're saying they're going to appeal it. Um, I think that's a mistake. I think that they should just kind of move on. You're in the state that's number one for business in America right now. Uh, we have the lowest unemployment amongst large states, highest GDP growth amongst large states. Is it so bad that you actually have to live under the same laws as everybody else, including your competitors? Of course not. This is not a matter of high principle for them. This is a matter of them trying to claw back special privileges that they were never entitled to in the first place. I have not seen the legislation, but I've been very clear ever since I've been governor, I do not support taking down monuments in this state. We've got to stop with this, okay? You know, it's like you, you learn from history um, and, and you do that. But to try to just say, and here's the thing, when they'll say, oh, well, the, the five years ago, it's like, oh, well, we just, they just didn't want some Civil War general or whatever. And then now that's turned into taking down Thomas Jefferson and Teddy Roosevelt and Lincoln, taking Washington's name off schools. That is, it is nuts. And so I've just said, no, uh, we're not going to support uh, removing any monuments or taking down any statutes. We've created some protections when we did the anti-rioting legislation where because people were trying to topple stuff. So we added some penalties there. But I think it's totally appropriate for the legislature to say, you know what, we're going to stop the madness. Uh, we're not going to do. I heard people in, in Jacksonville want to take down Andrew Jackson. What are we going to rename the city? I mean, come on. We've got to stop doing this, and I think that it's just, it's not something that's going to end up working out well for us, and especially, it's like, you know, who, who's next? Okay, you're already up to, like, Lincoln and Teddy Roosevelt. I mean, you're going to go on and on there, because if you're going to, if you're going to apply some type of hyper-woke 21st century test to pass people, you know, you're going to run into turbulence with MLK Jr. You're going to run into turbulence with a lot of people. And it's like, is that really how we view history? No. History is what it is. Uh, you learn from it, and, and, then, and then you try to do the best you can again going forward. So, so I'm 100% against removing uh, the monuments. I think it's just, uh, it's just gone too far. Yeah, so I have to look at that. I mean, look, anything that's been taken down uh, since I've been governor, uh, I, I, that's not anything I've supported. I don't know how many have been. I know there's been controversy here in this area. I think it's been relatively minor, but, but my view is, is, is you don't take down. Um, and so if someone is taken down, I think that that's a mistake. Yes, sir. It's not targeting anybody. It's just we got to recognize what's the fact. Okay, you're born one way or another. There's only two. Okay, you know, I, I get this like thing where people say like, you know, you have a baby and it's like a gender assigned at birth. No, 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 no. I mean, God's been doing this a while. Okay, <laughs> it's either one or the other. And that's just what it is. Now, how someone conceives of themselves and all that, th that is subjective, okay? And so I think what we have to do from the state perspective is just focus on the objective biological realities um, because the minute you go off of that, the minute it can be subjective, well, what else can be subjective? And, and there's a whole host of other things that you could just say is that. So it's not targeting anybody. It's just how do you have to, to root your policy? And I think we just have to root our policy in truth and in fact. And so that's what it is. You're, you're born one way or you're born the other, and that's just how we got to roll. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, they're in contact with uh, Texas DPS. Uh, basically, Texas has had um, this EMAC request. It's been pretty standard. This is not necessarily anything new. Uh, that they've needed support. They've been asking for support, so it's in response to that. But I do think for us, we really started thinking about, we've done a lot, but we saw what was happening with the barricades, and we wanted to make sure those barricades uh, could be erected. 
And so if our folks can help with that, we thought that that was something that was very important. So, um, so they're going to be working together. Uh, exactly where they'll go will really be done in conjunction with Texas. Uh, I anticipate uh, people will start moving out uh, relatively uh, shortly uh, and will likely uh, you know, be, be busing a lot of people o over to the state of Texas. So I, I think it's a great mission. It's interesting, I've having talked to folks who've done it, you know, there's a lot of passion in this mission. For, for folks, I've talked to a lot of the FHP guys, FDLE. Uh, you know, it's not easy work because you're away from your family, you're in, and some of these places in Texas, you know, South Texas, as a native Floridian, I remember we did an event there in June on the border. That was the hottest I've ever been in my life. Hotter than Iraq, hotter than Florida in August or September. I mean, it was really, really bad. But then in the winter, it actually gets pretty cold, uh, too. So it, it's, it's, in terms of the climate, it can be challenging. And so we've had a lot of guys that have been out there um, that have done really, really well. We appreciate the service. We know that we're asking um, you know, to step up and supplement what you're already doing. I want to thank all the agencies, uh, FHP. I want to thank FDLE. I want to thank uh, National Guard. You know, they have day jobs that they do here. And so they're not really um, subtracting from anything they're already doing. They're still doing all the stuff that they normally do. They're just doing extra duty to be able to help this country. So I think that's really good service. And ultimately, when you're involved in any type of public service, you know, that's what it's all about. Are you making a difference in people's lives or not? And these folks are making a difference. And Florida is making a difference. Thanks, everybody. God bless. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. God bless you guys. Thanks so much. Appreciate it.